What's up, fellas? Welcome to a brand new episode of The Sports Student. My name is Wendell Epps, a.k.a. The Sports Student. In today's podcast, I'll be interviewing Aaron Summers. Aaron currently works as a sideline reporter and color analyst for ESPN. And in this podcast, she'll talk about how she's seen the sports media industry change over time and give some great advice on how to succeed in the industry as a whole. So sit back, relax, enjoy the podcast. And without further ado, this is a Sports Student interview with Aaron Summers. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of The Sports Student. My name is Wendell Epps. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Aaron Summers. Aaron, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. Yeah, I'm so excited. I always love talking to young, upcoming broadcasters. It's really fun. The energy is always good. You guys are excited about the business, and I'm happy to share whatever I can. Yeah, definitely. So, like, first thing first, like, how's your summer been going? Uh, what have you been kind of doing with the whole sports media around this summer? This summer, actually, I have been taking some time off. Last awesome. year was crazy. There were so many changes, you know, with COVID and the industry was very fluid. And um, I kind of had to switch a lot of roles and take on some new opportunities on the production side and then kind of take it jobs in working as an analyst instead of just doing sideline and games are getting canceled and switching all over the place. So it was a crazy past year, I actually worked a lot more than I was anticipating. So that was good. And so this summer, um, covering college sports, primarily, once the college sports season is over, I kind of have a little break to catch my breath and went on a couple vacations. And now football is picking back up. So we're, we're about to be hitting the ground running right again. That's very cool. Uh, what was your uh, favorite vacation this summer? I went to Colorado to Seaboat Springs. It's beautiful out there. I know everyone talks about going going skiing during the winter, but I say go during the summer. You can go hiking and biking on the lake, and it's beautiful. That's fantastic. Definitely sounds like a fun trip. So if you could just go ahead real quickly and just like give a background of like where you started, where did this love for sport and sports media come from, and where you are now? From a young age, I always liked watching sports. I was the first of three girls, and – my dad played at Cal Berkeley. He played football there. So he kind of had sports in his nature. And my mom went to Oregon. She's a diehard Duck fan. And we watched a lot of Pac-12 football, basketball. And then I grew up in San Diego. So we watched the Chargers a lot. And I just loved it. You know, I loved sitting on the couch, hanging out with my dad on the weekends, watching games. I thought I was so cool. And um, as a little girl, I didn't really understand the game. But I would like listen for things. And so every time I heard a whistle, I'd be like, oh, flag, flag, penalty. And they'd be like, what are you talking about? And they're like, oh my God, Aaron, how did you know that? And I would just listen for the whistles, right? So um, I learned a lot watching, hanging out with my dad and my uncles. And unfortunately, I'm not as athletic as my dad was. And he didn't really understand how to help me become better or more talented. Uh, so I decided that um, going professional in sports was not going to be it for me. I would have to do it on the broadcast side. And so I went to UNC Chapel Hill, studied journalism, and started working everywhere I could after that. Um, I started at WRAL TV in Raleigh, North Carolina as a multimedia journalist and managed a lot of their content on their sports website and got my first taste of the business there. It was a lot of fun, a lot of fun sports to cover, obviously center of ACC basketball and football. Um, got some good times covering the Carolina Hurricanes and the Carolina Panthers. So that's kind of where it all started as far as me working in broadcasting. That's fantastic. And like, how was that experience like uh, going to UNC? UNC was amazing. And I didn't realize how much fun it was going to be going to a school that was winning national championships. You yeah. know, when I was there, it it's so much fun. Everybody on campus just is in love with Carolina and roots for this every sport across the board. And there are a lot of sports, not just basketball, that do really well there. So, you know, I kind of got a, a taste of field hockey and lacrosse and was going to all these different events. Um, and it was really fun. And to be able to cover that caliber of talent and that level as a student, you know, with our student run TV stations and the newspaper there on campus with a daily Tar Heel, 
was really fun. I was spoiled and I didn't even know it. <laughs> yeah, North Carolina, like the school itself and then the entire state, like it's just fantastic. It's definitely a, a sports state. I mean, me going to college now in North Carolina, I've definitely been able mm-hmm. to, to witness that, which is super awesome. And for you, like you've been in the sports media industry now for, for quite a while. Like how have you seen it change since you first entered it? Yeah, luckily it's changed in a lot of good ways, especially as far as females are concerned. Yeah, We've been more widely accepted. Um, Love that. Definitely times earlier in my career, I, you know, come, growing up in the South, some older football coaches, high school coaches kind of stuck in their ways would, would question my knowledge or, you know, questions that I asked. And, you know, that was frustrating at times. Um, luckily now, you know, I kind of just made a point to make sure I, I know my stuff and I show up ready and prepared and don't allow people the opportunity to question me and what I know. Um, so that's helped. And it's been really fun to see women step into roles as analysts and play by play at you know the biggest stages and even the Olympics now. So that's exciting, great opportunities for women. Um, definitely hope that continues. And then just the landscape of covering sports in general right it used to be so tv news heavy like you waited for the six o'clock news to to watch what happened in sports and as time goes on you know you can find information in a second online with social media and so many different websites so that was a transition that you know i was a part of at the tv station them kind of really having to accept social media and breaking news and how to handle it and not wait for the six o'clock news. Like, no, we need to get this out now if we're gonna compete with other people. Um, Trying to teach all the older people at the TV station how to use Twitter and how to use all the different socials and and really take advantage of that. Um, It's it's crazy. I mean, there's so many different avenues that you can cover sports on now. Like really anybody like yourself can sit down and have a podcast or have a blog. And it's really cool that you know, everybody can kind of take advantage of, of the different platforms. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, it's it's allowing like people like like myself, like in college, like to have these opportunities that, you know, maybe weren't available like 10 years ago, you know, doing podcasts, taking advantage of technology. So like, it's just really beneficial in general for the sports media industry. Yeah. And it gives you the opportunity to, to work on, you know, some things, to figure out how to yeah. ask questions, how to have a conversation with somebody, do some research to get ready for, your podcasts and and everything like that. So it's, it's great. You know, anybody that has a phone can go and practice being on camera. I mean, heck, you can take a a pen or a a hairbrush and practice like in front of your mirror, you know, so it's really cool that people are taking advantage of these types of opportunities. Yeah, definitely. And it's only going to continue to grow as time goes on. But like, I want to get your thoughts on social media sort of taking over the sports media industry. What are your thoughts on that? And which social media platform do you think provides the most benefits to our industry? Yeah, I, I'm kind of still old school in the way that I think that, you know, it's really important to be right and to be accurate before being just being first. Um, and to make sure you attribute where you get your information from. I know a lot of people will scroll through Twitter and be like, oh, this trade just happened. And it's like, okay, like, did you break that news? Where did you get that from? You know, you should give credit where it's due. If a, if a reporter is the one who broke it first, at least say like first reported by, you know, so I think that there are some codes of journalism that should still be followed. Um, so we all know that, you know, people are being, ethical and accurate in the way that they're reporting things. And, and we know we can trust the sources and where stuff is coming from. Um, I think Twitter is probably like the best place to get instant information because you can just kind of scroll and it, when something happens, it blows up and everybody's talking about it. You can go there and get lots of different opinions and um, it's, it's just great for instant information. And then I think some of the social media is like, Instagram and TikTok and different ways to kind of see more personality of a team or of a player. That's cool because not all of us are ever going to be able to play in the NFL, but all of us can relate to this NFL player and his pet or what he likes to do, what types of food he likes to cook or his hobbies and stuff like that. So it kind of gives us a more human side to, to relate to. Yeah, most definitely, because like these athletes are human at the end of the day and social media is their chance to 
get to show that side, that fun side of them and, you know, not take themselves too seriously. Cause like it's sports and you're able to have fun, which is like the beauty of it too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what we all were missing last year when we didn't have anything to watch. We all had to worry about what was going on in our actual lives and couldn't just focus on the the game. Yeah, it definitely was. It it sucked not having sports, but we were able to get, you know, a couple sports back last summer, which was great with the NBA and MLB. So things are, you know, hopefully continuing to progress in the right direction now. Uh, But for you, like, how would you describe your, your like reporting broadcasting stuff or to ask someone what's Aaron Summers like in front of the camera? What would be the answer to that? Hopefully I'm pretty much the same as I am in, in real life. I like to, you know, bring a little bit of myself into my reporting. I think as time's gone on, I've gotten more comfortable being myself and not so worried about saying everything exactly the right way. You know, I, I used to write out the stuff that I was going to say, and you could see me in my head going through my script and just trying to get it out exactly perfect. We don't have to be perfect. Nobody's perfect. People are going to make mistakes and you just kind of want to be conversational and, you know, tell the information, get it across. And it's okay if you say it five different ways, you know, like as long as it makes sense and you get get the point across that you're trying to get across and you say it relatively grammatically correct and accurately say everyone's names, then it's fine. I, I like to bring a little bit more of, like we talked about, the human interest side to it. I like to definitely bring the knowledge of the game and bring fans inside that. But I like to also kind of show who these players are, tell some good stories. I think that's a lot of a lot of the fun part is really getting to know these players as people. Yeah, it's definitely important. Like that's the beauty of like sports in general, like working in the sports media industry, you have the chance to tell these incredible stories and like make a difference, which just pays like huge dividends at the end of the day. It's definitely fun. There's a lot of really heartwarming stories out there and a lot of tough situations that people have, you know, come out of. And I think it's, it's really cool. It's inspiring and you can really learn a lot and, you know, be motivational for other people that, want to see themselves in those positions one day yeah exactly and like what what would you say is like the most memorable story you ever done in your sports media career gosh um at a lower level here there's a high school player who had leukemia and he was playing and you know was diagnosed and it wasn't looking good for him but he worked really hard he beat it and he was able to come back and play football again and it's incredible you know, he lost 90 pounds for him to be able to come back and compete on a football field. It's physical of a sport as that is. And, you know, he didn't go on to play in the next level, but he was able to elevate into a coaching role. And it was just really cool that, you know, it was his desire to get back on the football field and, and be around his teammates and the love that they had for him um, really helped kind of push him through and be able to defeat that situation and and overcome it and it's just that's what sports can do for people too it gives them a little bit um, added incentive sometimes because of the camaraderie and people just how much they love being a part of that team yeah that whole like teamwork aspect it applies in you know when you're playing sports and even when you're covering sports too because like you're working with with so many people too uh for you like who have been like some of the like best people you've worked with throughout your time in your career and how they helped you like develop your skills in the industry Yeah, I've been able to meet a lot of different people in this career and across the board from, you know, athletes to coaches and fellow media members. And I think that, you know, at WREL, uh, Jeff Gravely, he was the main anchor there. He now works for NC State. He was a huge instrumental part of, of my growth. You know, he did things the right way. He worked really hard. He cared about his relationship with the people that he covered um, and, he, and he developed a good network and he was trusted in the area and always brought a good product. And I think that that kind of work ethic is really important uh, in this industry. And then from beyond that, you know, people like Debbie Antonelli, she's actually from the same area that I am. She went to NC State, played basketball there, and now she's a college basketball analyst. And I think she's done a lot for women in this industry and She's been a great sounding board for me and she's always so positive and so encouraging and the, and she says, you know, she's still trying to get better every day. And I think that's a great mentality to have is, you know, she's still trying to achieve and still trying to, to grow in 
and her roles and what she's doing. And, and I love that, you know, you look at people that are at the very top and that's what they say. It's like, yeah, I mean, I want to be better tomorrow. I want to, you know, connect more with my audience or the fan base. I want to bring better stats. I want to have a better outlook on, on things or, or whatever it is. And that's kind of what we should all strive to do is to continue to get better and not ever be complacent. Um, that's why people get to be the best of the best. It's because they have that drive. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, there's always room to get better and you have so many opportunities to do that too. I'm curious to know, do you remember the first time that you were like live, like your first live hit? Do you remember that? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, so I left my job at WRL to do um, kind of a pregame show and sideline reporting for Time Warner Cable Sports Channel, which is no longer anymore after Spectrum bought them. But I was doing high school games of the week. And the very first opportunity that they gave me, I was talking and I was doing my thing and I'm sideline and the band started. And it was just so loud in my ear that I just stopped talking. I was just like, I, I was lost my train of thought, my concentration. And then I just kind of started fumbling through and I was just like, all right, back to you guys. And it was so embarrassing. And looking back at it, it, it happens, you know, it happens at the highest level. People stumble over their words and they stop talking, but you know, there's a stuff that sits with you and you're like, man, like, what do I need to do that that never happens again? And so you learn how to not let the outside factors become a, a you know, have an impact on, on what you're doing or have an effect. And, and there's so many different things that happen as far as technology, you know, messing up, you know, you lose, you can't hear, you know, the producer in your ear anymore. You have no connection with the truck. And so you're kind of out here blind and you're just trying to add to a broadcast and work with your camera guy to have him tell them when you have something. And there's, you just got to kind of roll with the punches and not be so hard on yourself. And I think that over time, I realized that you're just not going to be perfect every day for whatever reason. And you kind of just got to make the best of it. Yeah, definitely. And like, we all know your, your first time on camera, it's not going to be your best time on camera. You know, it's, it's the first oh, time. No. Yeah. I mean, there's still times I walk away and I'm like, what the heck just came out of your mouth? <laughs> like, I don't understand. Was that English? And like, and it's so frustrating because you, you're in the moment you're like you know your stuff and you know what you mm -hmm. want to ask and then you get you get the the guy the coach in front of you and just something else comes out of your mouth and you're like what was that so yeah. I mean it's just kind of a combination of a lot of things in in the moment that sometimes yeah it doesn't come out the way that you want you're not the the best that day and everybody has bad moments right yeah, no, definitely. Uh, I'm a victim of that too. So <laughs> we're all victims of that. Uh, but like for you, like when it comes to like asking uh, questions, like as a reporter, like what's kind of your strategy to coming up with questions? Is it like, oh, I'm going to come in with a list or I'm kind of just going to, you know, go with the flow? Yeah. So it depends on the format, whether it's uh, like a podcast or a mm -hmm. set interview, then I definitely have a list of questions or topics. I've done some research of places I want to go with the interview. Um, and I've kind of tried to shy away from really scripting everything out because that's where I trip myself up because I try to remember word for word what I was trying to say. Um, and so I kind of try to just bullet point uh, this. I want to, these are the stats or this is the topic I want to hit and just ask the question um, in the flow of the conversation. And then I really try to listen to and ask follow-up questions on stuff that's interesting. You know, the more detail on different issues that come up throughout the conversation. Um, I think that some people get really hooked on asking every question, you know, in the way they have it written down and not really listening. And I mean, it's not very natural to do that. And then yeah. you can miss a lot too. You know, I could tell you like, I, I had the worst day ever, like my, my cat died or something like that. And you're just like, okay, so then when you left this job, what did you do? And instead of talking about this horrible tragedy that happened to me and right, maybe yeah. that leads to something else exactly I don't have a cat by the way um <laughs> but then in a flow of the game that's a completely different animal like you you really can't come in with any pre 
written out questions because you don't know what's going to unfold in the game. So there it's so important to watch the game and kind of try to get a feel for what's happening and why. Um, and that's what you want to ask about, you know, obviously I like to look at stats too, especially you know, at halftime to see um, if they were shooting really well from outside in the first uh, for women's game in the first quarter. And then in the second quarter, they weren't, you know, well, well, what changed there and kind of ask about that. And then, you know, I try not to ask anything that's just a yes or no question. I try not to put my opinion in there and say, well, you know, you really started to suck in the second quarter. So, you know, I want them to tell me how they feel about their team and what they were doing right or wrong and not tell them their business. So yeah. just kind of uh, asking an open-ended question about something that you saw in the game or something that you think had an effect on the game. Yeah, most definitely. Cause like sports in general is like, it's just so unpredictable. You never know what you're going to get yeah. whenever you're covering a game. And sometimes it comes right down to the wire, you know, yeah. like as the, the few minutes come to the close of the first half or at the end of the game, you know, I'm definitely thinking about what I want to ask. Right. But if it's yeah. a, a one point game or a buzzer beater or whatever, then you just ask about that. Like everything goes out the window and you ask about that last shot or the last few seconds of the game or what transpired there. Um, you know, and it's kind of weird because the whole rest of the game at that point, you know, is it's like you don't even really ask about it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do you remember the first like game you ever like reported on that was like a game winner, buzz beater type thing? Oh my gosh. I don't think I do. Um, I mean, it had to have been obviously a basketball game. Um, there's a lot that I covered that I wasn't there, like the sideline reporter on the live game, but you're up against a deadline for the TV station. And the way that that works is, you know, say we have a nine or eight o'clock tip and you have to have stuff for the 10 o'clock show. Well, you know, you can do the math. Like exactly at halftime, I, I run to the locker room. I throw some clips in, send them to the TV station from the first half. And hopefully one team is winning by a lot and we're good. But if that's not the case, then right when the game ends, if it's a buzzer beater, then I have to send something else back. Right. Um, or if, if somebody got hurt or if somebody got ejected, whatever, if something happened, then I quickly have to try to like just edit a clip to add in and send that. Plus, ideally, go get some sound from the locker room and the coach. And so that's when it can get a little dicey because the show starts at 10. Sports doesn't come on until like 1023. So you have a little bit of leeway, but not a lot. And yeah, I mean, you're definitely fighting time and technology and the internet sending stuff back. <laughs> yep. It, it's crazy. There's like so many things you have to worry about, but it's like, that's why it's important, you know, knowing how to multitask, knowing how to like have those variety of skills. Cause it just pays off in the long run. Yeah. I mean, that kind of adrenaline is fun though. I mean, that's yeah, why I think exactly. a lot of people cover sports is because mm -hmm. it's, it's not the same thing every day. Right. Um, you know, I, I think I would have a hard time sitting at a desk doing the same thing all the time. Yeah. Like the schedule can kind of suck sometimes, you know, everybody else is doing stuff on nights and weekends, but we're working because we're covering games and, you know, it could be late nights and stuff, but the content of what you're covering, it's so much fun and you never know what's going to happen when you go into work on a, a daily basis. Definitely. Like how have you balanced working in the sports media industry while also trying to maintain like a social life as well? Well, it was a lot easier when I was younger because I had um, more energy and I could stay up later. So to be honest, I would like work at the TV station until like 11 and I would go out and go see my friends and, and whatever. Cause people are, you know, young, you're out till two o'clock in the morning and it's fine. Yeah. I didn't have to be at work again until three the next day. So I could sleep in a little bit, but then as I started having to, you know, I was on air more and reporting, like I needed to have a little more healthy work-life balance where I'm not, you know, going out as much and I'm sleeping and taking care of myself and making sure that I sleep, you know, and prepared going into the games. And so, yeah, you don't have as much free time then because you're kind of working and preparing leading into the actual day that you're working or the game that you're working. Yeah. So it's a lot of um, time management. You know, you have to kind of make sure that when you do have a day off, you make the most of it. 
and you go see your parents and your sisters and, and your friends and, and do stuff on the days that you can. So when you're busy, they're not nagging you and saying, well, exactly. we haven't seen you in forever. And you're like, well, you know what, guess what, you know, turn the TV on. I'm working. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. Like my, my mom still doesn't get that. I work at night. You're I'm like, mom, you watch sports. Like, right. I don't know why this is a concept you cannot understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like the same thing for me too. Like, um, because, you know, I announced games like on, on ESPN plus for, for my school high point, like my parents, yeah. my friends, they, they could see me like on TV, like just, just open the ESPN app and like watch me, you know, yeah. so it's one of those things, but like um, uh, for, for you, like what, what's your favorite activity to do on off day? Um, I mean, I love watching sports. I'm a junkie. So especially um, like I said, during college football season, I cover a lot of college, uh -huh. college sports. So on Sundays, that's like my day to relax and watch NFL and kind of enjoy it mm -hmm. and not have to be thinking about how it affects, you know, the college football landscape. And, and this team is going to be playing this person next week and whatever. Like I really can just be a fan and enjoy that. So I love doing that. I love you know, going out, having a nice long dinner, taking my time, you know, doing the whole like appetizers, main yeah. course, oh, yeah. you know, dessert, if it's- That's the best thing know. ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I just, just try to like enjoy the, the time that I do have to do that stuff. And I like to get outside, like to work out, you know, that's pretty, that's pretty difficult stuff. Yeah, that's, that's fun stuff. And like, I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to put you on the, the spot here with the NFL and the NBA. I want you to give me your, your Super Bowl prediction and next year's Ooh. NBA finals prediction. I know it's early, but I'm yeah. curious. Well, I mean, so obviously like everybody thinks the Bucks are, are going to repeat. Um, and I, I can see them doing that. So if uh, Brady can stay healthy and everything kind of, kind of continue to roll as it is, then I think they're in a pretty good position. And then for the NBA, you know, Lakers making a, the blockbuster deals and adding Russell Westbrook. And that kind of gives LeBron James, you know, helps with his load management, gives him another point guard for the team. Like, I think the Lakers are poised to do it as well. Again, if the team can stay healthy, uh, they need to add a, another shooting threat, I think. Definitely. And if they can do that, um, somebody that can really just be a catch and shoot guy off the ball, uh, then yeah, I think the Lakers. Yeah, no, I, I like that. Yeah, I think if the Lakers maybe add someone like Carmelo Anthony, I was thinking. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, they need somebody that can shoot the three, like, consistently. That's true, yeah. There's a couple of good shooters out on the market uh, this yeah. summer. So, yeah, we'll see We'll see what happens with that. Um, but, like, uh, for you, is it, what else are you, like, hoping to achieve in the sports media industry? Like, what, what else are you trying to gain out of your career here? Well, I think kind of everybody likes to continue to feel like they're taking a step forward. Yeah. Whether, you know, where you're at right now doing, you know, ESPN plus broadcasts, working for your school, maybe it's a, a step into a quote unquote better conference or mm -hmm. a power five conference where you're starting to cover those types of teams. Um, if you don't have like a favorite sport that you're trying to trend towards, then I think me personally, I have done a lot of college and I would love to start working in the pro market and cover some pro teams a little bit more. Um, other than that, the natural progression of, you know, doing school broadcast and then TV broadcast and network, regional network broadcast, and then, you know, national broadcast. So I've done a couple at all the levels, but just kind of trying to more consistently be at a higher level. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that's what it's all about like continuing to find new ways to grow uh, because mm -hmm. you have so many opportunities to do it I have to ask you do you think uh college basketball is still the best route to to go to if you're trying to get to the NBA yeah I mean it's this industry is so crazy because there's so many different ways you could get somewhere I think that if you want to work in the NBA then you could either start as an intern at a really low you know, level, just being a, mm -hmm. a college intern doing stats or doing communications or something yeah. for them and, and start trying to meet people that way and right. network and, and move your way up as long as you're getting experience on air elsewhere, you know, because you can't exactly. just be running papers around and then yeah. all of a sudden they're going to put you in the radio booth. <laughs> um, you have to make sure you're getting the experience and progressing, working on your actual craft that you want to do. Um, 
and then, yeah, I mean, if you start on air at a collegiate level, and then, like we said, try to move up conferences or mm-hmm. move up um, the more widely watched uh, teams and stuff like that to kind of get yourself out there more and make an impact that way. It's a lot about networking, though. It's a Definitely. lot about calling people, emailing people, putting yourself out there, going to events, just saying hi, showing somebody who you are face to face, which we can do again. And, you know, kind of sending your stuff, asking for feedback and, and showing that you're willing to put in the work and you want to get better. And um, it's hard because a lot of times you don't hear anything back. And that's going to happen. There's so many people out there that want to do this and they probably get inundated with emails and people reaching out. So yeah, I mean, you're not going to get an answer back every time, but you are going to find some people that will will help and who will be in your corner and want to help you get better and, and help make connections for you. And, and you just kind of got to take those opportunities when you can get them. Yeah, most certainly. And I think that's also what I really admire about the sports media industry. It's like, you know, you're here to help each other. Like everyone's just trying to help each other out at the end of the day. So it, it's a competitive industry, but it's an industry that if you have the right mindset, you know, you can definitely go far in. Yeah, it's, it can be tough at times. You're going to hear a lot of no's and you really have to be certain in what you want to do. Um, It's, it doesn't pay great uh, for a while. And, you know, like we talked about the hours aren't the best, but if you really love what you do and you have a passion for it and you're, you're kind to people and you show up and you do a good job, people are going to notice that, you know? Um, And I think eventually that will get you where you want to go. Yeah, no, most definitely. I totally agree with that. All right, Aaron. Well, I want to go ahead. I want to end this interview with you, asking you a couple rapid fire questions if you're up for it. All right, let's go. All right, let's do it. First question here. If you could have any superpower, what would it be? To teleport. Nice. Uh, where would you teleport to? The beach right now. <laughs> <Like some laughs> tropical beach. I would leave. I that have weekend fun. off, like, let's hey, go. <laughs> yeah, beach it is. All right, next one for you here. Um, what's one food you can't live without? Oh, gosh. Uh, maybe pizza. Ugh, it's terrible. I try to stay away from it as much as possible, but it's really good. <laughs> oh, pizza is good. Do you, uh, I have to ask you, do you think pineapple belongs on pizza? No. No? <laughs> no, but see, I am a person that, like, I'll put fruit in my salad for sure. Uh-huh. That's fine. But I don't know. I've never gotten behind the, the pineapple fruit pizza thing. Yeah, no, same here. Uh, what's one city that you have not been to, but you like to visit at some point in your life? Um, I have not gone a lot of places overseas. I studied abroad when I was in college. So I studied out of London and was able to kind of travel around that area. But yeah. I would love to go to you know somewhere in Greece, Sicily, nice. know, Italy somewhere like Rome. I don't know. I would just, I feel like I need to get to Europe and explore a little bit more. So that would be that. Uh, obviously I've never been to Canada. So, um, Vancouver, Montreal, I think would be fun too. That would be really cool for sure. Uh, what's your biggest pet peeve? Um, when people eat with their mouths open. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Not fun. (laughs) I, so I'm like legally blind pretty much. So I guess my other senses are are more alert because of that. And so I just, just hear it and it just irks me. So, yeah. Uh, What's your favorite quote of all time? Uh, I don't think I have a favorite quote. I kind of, one of those people that scroll through, you know, that's what I do on Instagram. I get into these terrible places where I'm just scrolling through inspirational quotes. I'm like, what, what do I need today? Like, what is going to get me Uh going? Um, Exactly. And I, uh, I I came across one today that was just like, you can, like, you can, whatever it is you want to do, like you can. So I think we'll go with that for today. I, I think people, you know, kind of put the fear aside and just go for it. And you never know. You just got to take that first step. Definitely. Just keep on working. Uh, What was your favorite and least favorite subject in school growing up? My favorite subject was probably, oh gosh, um, math, because there was a, yeah, because there was like a a right answer. There was a, yeah, this is, this is the way you do it. 
Um, my least favorite was science. Okay. Would you, uh, I was just terrible. I got chemistry, you, all that science stuff was wasn't, oh. hard. It was hard for me. Yeah. Did you ever take physics? Uh, yes, I did in high school. I did take physics. I took AP physics and Oof. I didn't do, t I didn't do bad. I did fine, but it was a lot of work. Yeah. Would you, would you ever have any interest in becoming a math tutor on the side? <laughs> well, the thing is, is I placed out of all math after high school. So I never yeah. have taken math again since high school. Oh. So I don't know if I could do it now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you weren't working in the sports media industry, what would you be doing? I would have probably been an attorney. Nice. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I, my mom always said I should, cause I can argue really well. Oh yeah. That's right. So you, are you the kind of person that like you can win any debate you're a part of? Yes. And I realized at some point that that's probably not fair, right? <laughs> like I don't always have to be right. I don't have to uh, find a way to be right. I don't yeah. have to, you know, um, and I'm not always right. So I've realized as I've grown up that I can, I can concede. For sure. Uh, a couple more for you here. Uh, what are your three favorite hobbies to do that are not sports related? So I love to cook. Um, and I tried to manipulate recipes like recipes that are really good, like as in bad for you and try to make them healthy. So it's, that's kind of actually a, a science experiment in itself. Yeah, that's um, really cool. So sometimes it works better than, than not, especially baking. Baking's really hard to, to switch, but so I like to cook a lot. And then, um, like I said, I like to get outdoors, whether it's, you know, hiking, going for a bike ride, um, just being outside. I really enjoy that. And then I like to read a lot. Very cool. I love that. Um, Aaron, uh, fill in the blank here. Aaron Summers is. Oh my gosh, that's so hard. <laughs> that be one word. Yeah, one word. Nice. Okay. Not wrong. No, I, I mean, I feel like I'm. I'm a pretty like outgoing person, so maybe outgoing. Okay. I, I feel like I can kind of talk to anybody, and I and I want. Pe all people to kind of feel like accepted and mm -hmm. um so I like to relate to people any way that I can to kind of you know I don't know develop a connection with different people yeah definitely that's awesome uh if you were if you had to enter a talent show what would be your talent organization is that a talent <laughs> <laughs> I'm curious how would you uh how would you showcase that on stage I don't know. See, like, I can't <laughs> sing. I can't dance. Like I'm not athletic enough to like do anything fancy. So, uh, well, you want to yeah, try stand-up comedy? I could try to be, I could try. I think you, I, I consider think myself be really good. funny. Yeah. I think I, you'd be pretty good. Yeah. I, uh, I think that's a safe yeah. bet. I have to like, you know, know my audience, uh -huh. know what's going to hit or not. Sometimes it, it, you know, yeah, you can kind of fall flat. I pick yeah. my moments too. That's, that's key in comedy, you know? Oh yeah, definitely. Do you have like a, a favorite joke you like to tell people? No, no, I'm not a <laughs> corny joke person. I'm like pretty sarcastic. And so, um, and I'll, I'll listen and stuff that people talk about, or, um, I'll wait and I'll throw mm -hmm. it in like later. And they're like, Oh my God, like, ouch. And I'm like, well, I mean, sorry. I don't know. So I'm kinda, I kind of use people's stuff against them, which is terrible. Maybe I'm not nice. <laughs> uh -huh. Nothing wrong being, you know, a little funny and sarcastic every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> and last question for you here. What's one fun fact a lot of people do not know about Aaron Summers? I was a dramatic arts major in college in acting. Nice. Yeah, so would you, so... would you ever want to like uh, act like in a show or movie? Yeah. Yeah. That was my original plan. And my mom told me that I might need a backup plan. So then I picked being in a journalist right because broadcasting yeah. is just as easy exactly yeah in front of the camera kind of thing so yeah pre pretty straightforward it was pretty you. it was pretty similar but it's definitely a hard career path it's not yeah. uh, a safe second bet by all means yeah no definitely so like if you did have your own tv show like what would it be about and what would your character be like um i think it would be really fun to do a show about broadcasting i don't think Ooh. there's really one that follows no 
you know, what it is really like for uh, a broadcaster coming up and the situations that they kind of ha have to find themselves in every day, whether it's trying to track down a story or a mm -hmm. person or chase a deadline um, or just a live game, things that can happen. You know, I don't know. It'd be kind of a fun story to to follow. So obviously something I'm familiar with and I think yeah. I could do a good job playing that role. Oh, that's a great concept. I definitely would binge watch that kind of show. I think there's a lot of cool yeah. storylines you could take with that. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I know they've done like agents and kind of followed that. Uh -huh. They've done stuff with professional athletes and everything, but they've done news, the newsroom or whatever that was. They've done news shows, but never like a sports broadcaster. Mm hmm. Yeah, no, that definitely be really cool. All right, Aaron. Well, thank you so much again for coming on the podcast today. I really appreciate it. I mean, you have done incredible things in the sports media industry. I'm a huge fan of yours and just keep up the great work. Thank you so much. I enjoyed the conversation. All right, fellas. So that was a sports student interview with Aaron Summers. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on those post notifications so you don't miss a single episode of a sports student interview. This series has been taken off, and I am just so grateful for everyone's support. It means the world to me, and I just can't wait to continue releasing new content to you guys. But that is why it's so important that you guys like, comment, subscribe, and turn those post notifications on. Please do, because it pays off in the long run. So thank you so much in advance for doing that. And I will see you guys in my next episode. All right, y'all, take care. Sports student, signing out. Peace.